All right, guys, Josh Rubin from East West Healing. Today, I want to talk about functional hypothyroidism, the illusion of a thyroid issue. But before we get started, don't forget to like this video, show us some support, show us even more support, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification button. So every week when we put out a video, you get notified. Let's jump in. All right, functional hypothyroidism, what is it? Really what it is, is, or the meaning of it, is we think there's a thyroid problem, but there's something else creating the illusion of a thyroid problem, but there really isn't a thyroid problem. That's what functional hypothyroidism is. Unfortunately, in 20 years of doing this work, me and my wife, now, I want to preface this with, I'm not a doctor. This is not a treatment plan. This is not to tell your doctor you're wrong, that I'm, that I'm right and they're wrong. And I'm not telling you to change your meds. This is just for educational purposes, right? Because I think we have to be informed so we can make the best decision for ourselves. Yes, anyone can tell you what to do and give you recommendations. But it's up to you to decide if it's right for you and if it works for you. Okay, so let's just go with that. So the problem is, as I was saying in 20 years, I would say a good 90% of people coming to us that have been told they have hyperthyroidism, told they have hypothyroidism, even Graves and Hashimoto's, a lot of the times they're incorrectly diagnosed and they're put on medication when they don't even need it or possibly the wrong type and such high doses of medication. Now, I'm not saying mistakes have been made, but based on our observations, we've had people come in and doctors said, you have Graves. And their thyroid labs are not that bad. Their TSH is low. That's not Graves, right? If you look at the textbook kind of diagnosing of it. Uh, but we're not diagnosing, we're just observing. So how do we get there? Of course, it could be at many things, right? It's, it's trauma, it's stress, it's dieting, it's overworking, it's undereating, it's malnutrition, it's medication, the list goes on. But let's say you're 40 years old. It's everything from conception till now that has caused this issue. So don't try to pinpoint it. It's not one thing. It's just, it just keeps evolving and evolving and adding up. So the first one is dysglycemia, high and low blood sugar, right? And when we work with people, we always correlate their labs, their full thyroid panel. TSH, T4, T3, free T4, free T3, TPO, if they can get thyroid binding globulin, great, T3 uptake, all that stuff. But we also correlate it with their body temperature and pulse and their patterns during the week, right? Because it is next to impossible to have good body temperatures and pulses and have true hypothyroidism. And this is what happens. People come in, I have hypothyroidism, and they have 97.8 temperatures. It's impossible based off of the work of Broto Mars. It is next to impossible. If you have true hypothyroidism, your body temperature and pulse will be low. And no matter what you do and who you work with and what you take, day after day, week after week, month after month, it doesn't change. That's a true thyroid issue. And then your TSH starts to go to 30, 150. We have clients with that. But let's jump back in. High and low blood sugar. The problem is when this happens, whether it's from a sluggish liver, liver's not it's storing minerals, it's not storing glycogen, we're not meeting our metabolic needs in our life because we're going low carb, we're trying vegan, we're going pro-metabolic, we're doing these different things, we're overtraining, we're so stressed at work, and we come home and we're stressed at home, and we sit in front of the TV and we get stressed on the TV, this instability all day within your physiology can create so many issues when it comes to energy production and can create the illusion of a thyroid issue. Why? Because... The more you do that and the more chronic it becomes, the more debt you create. But the body always has to meet its energetic needs. It has reserve systems. So the adrenals will eventually kick in. And that brings us to the second one. But the adrenals will kick in because they regulate the availability of fuel. So if it's not available, they're going to kick in. Now, of course, acute, we have this instability. And what you'll see is people will have low and high body temperatures and pulses during the day. A lot of times their labs will kind of be fine. There might be a low-ish T3 or a low TSH, but not too bad, right? It might be just under the norm, but their body temperatures and pulses will fluctuate all day long. Their mood will fluctuate. Their energy will fluctuate. That's dysglycemia. We have to meet our metabolic needs. Medication's not going to fix it because nothing's changed. That's created it. But when this becomes chronic, that 
Availability is not there, so the adrenal glands kick in to regulate the availability of fuel, so the thyroid has fuel to burn. This is the second one. This is functional hypothyroidism number two, which is an HPA stress, hypothalamus pituitary, I should say HPT, sorry. HPT stress or HPA and HPT stress, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal, hypothalamus pituitary thyroid stress. It's both, there's a relationship. You can't talk about the adrenals of the thyroid and the thyroid without the adrenals, Macarena, right? So, adrenals kick in. What happens though, is when we're not meeting our metabolic needs, they say, well, I need fuel. So they kick in. The problem is when it's chronic, we're always on this roller coaster, that hormone itself, because of the stress, is going to affect our lab values and create the the illusion of a thyroid problem when we really don't have a thyroid problem. What would that look like on a lab? Typically on a lab, what you're gonna see is TSH just below the norm, or a little bit lower, but T4 and T3 are fine. Most doctors will say this is hyperthyroidism, but it's not because remember, cortisol will drive TSH down. Stress will drive TSH down, right? And because of this stress, and because of ACTH and cortisol causing the body to produce metallothionine and kick copper out of the body, we need copper to stimulate TRH, right? It's the guardian, it's the mineral that regulates TRH to stimulate TSH. No copper, no TRH, no TSH, it drops, right? So you're gonna see low TSH, normal T4 and T3. This is not a thyroid problem, right? It's a stress problem. It could be for many different areas in your life, but it's a stress problem. It's something that can be handled with nutritional lifestyle modifications to de-stress the body, make fuel available to quiet down the adrenals so now you can meet your body's needs. The third is a conversion issue. And these all kind of play in together, right? So if we keep going chronic and we keep producing cortisol, we keep chelating minerals, the very things we need to produce these hormones, what happens now is you're going to block conversion in the liver. Now remember, the thyroid hormone produces not, you know, all the thyroid hormone, but it has to be converted peripherally. It's converted in the gut, the liver, etc. Liver converts most of it. I think the gut converts about 20%. The problem is when you're overproducing cortisol, many things can block it, right? Mineral deficiencies, but cortisol itself will block T4 to T3 conversion. So you go to your doctor, they say, oh, your TSH is normal. Your T4 is normal, but your T3 is low. You need T3. Survey says, eh, not true. It's a conversion issue because we're chronically stressed. Now you're pumping energy into the tank. It's like driving a 1980 Kia with 300,000 miles and putting a nitrous tank on it. It's gonna blow up. Your body can't handle that. That's why for most people it's crack. They get insomnia, rapid heart rate, they can't sleep, right? They're just so jittery and so nervous and so sweaty because they're throwing energy into the system that can't handle it. And all that person needed to do is change how they're living, change how they're eating, build resiliency to quiet down the adrenals, meet the body's needs to free up that conversion. It's that simple, my friends. The fourth is autoimmunity. Now remember, and we'll do a video on this, and if we have videos on this, I'll post them in the description that Hashimoto's, is not a thyroid problem. It's an indirect cause of something bigger. And that issue is a chronic immune system suppression from chronic stress, right? We get on the roller coaster every day, but we should get off it, right? We should be able to de-stress the system. As most people say, we should go from sympathetic to parasympathetic when we sleep. We should be able to get off that roller coaster. The problem is we're moving faster than ever. We're doing more than ever. We're eating less than ever. So that little stress that happened in your system when you were 10 or 20, wherever it happened, it just kept building and building, became chronic, created so much inflammation, it affected thyroid receptors, it's affecting thyroid hormone conversion, it's affecting the gut where it's being converted, it's affecting the liver where it's being converted, your chelating minerals, and over time, that chronic inflammation and all those minerals that get chelated suppress the immune system, it gets suppressed and suppressed and suppressed. This is what Hashimoto's is. It is an immune system issue, it is not a thyroid issue. So anytime you hear Hashimoto's, think million dollars in debt. This person has no energy in the tank, they're so in debt, they have no minerals in the tank, they're so depleted. What they need to do is regroup, step back. 
How do I slowly change how I'm living to build resiliency? How do I slowly change what I'm eating, when I'm eating, how I'm eating to support my system, to de-stress the system so I can start paying off my debt, stop the withdrawals, start paying off my debt so I can start building up my immune system again and replenish my minerals. That's what Hashimoto's is. It needs change. It's not something that needs medication. It's something that needs change. The next is the illusion of a thyroid issue because of elevated thyroid body and globulin. Usually TSH and T4 will be normal. T3 will be a little low, but T3 uptake and thyroid binding globulin will be elevated.